Was there a point where you thought that that could be a reasonable spot with your relationship with Mike? Uh, yeah, I mean, they were in a conversation. Um, not not much came from it, but they were definitely uh, one of the teams in the conversation. Seemed like a good spot. Uh, yeah, I mean, as an offense, that's you know tremendous skill players, everything they got going over there. Uh, Mike, you know, being a great coach, had been with him in the past year, and it was discussed. But uh, yeah, I'm glad the way things worked out. Yeah, I mean, they, I mean every, it worked out win-win for everybody. Didn't it? No right. doubt. Yeah, I think uh, you know things got a way of working out. You know, just, just how it is. Um, you said now there's no doubt you were coming back in, but Kyle said at first he wasn't sure. And then Brock said, told one of his guys, get a ball, and he started warming up. I'm just curious on your, uh, you know, you've been the number two guy before, and you have to be ready every week. What's been your sort of what you've seen out of Brock? How much better is he now than he was at the beginning of the year, even though he only gets scout team reps usually? Brock's come a long way, uh, as a lot of these rookies have. But um, you know, Brock takes it very seriously. Give him a tip of the hat for that. You know, uh, it's tough to come in as a rookie and be number two. I've, I did that in New England. and. It's just tough because you're trying to find your way as a rookie. You're trying to learn as much as possible, and in the split second, you might be out there. So, I thought Brock's done a great job. Uh, he's helped me a little bit on the on the sidelines during games, and it's just uh, when you're number two like that, it's the little things that go a long way. And I think he's earning the respect of the locker room, you know, just as number two should. How's your knee feel? Top. Hmm? How's your knee feel? Feels great. Feels great, baby. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's coming along. Yeah, feel uh, feel pretty good with it. A little off topic, though, you see players talking about artificial turf, uh, wanting to see grass or at least a commonality in artificial turf. Does, do you feel like players are talking about this? And is, like, um, would you support a push maybe from the union to try to get all grass fields? Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, I always just go back to, you know, you look at Premier League soccer in, in Europe. Uh, I mean, they all play on grass. There's there's a reason why they play on grass. And, you know, it's just it's better for the players. It's healthier for the players. Keeps the keeps the good players out there. I mean, no one wants to see injuries and get in a tough situation like that. But uh, I think it'll p take a big effort. Uh, players, coaches, owners, it's going to take everybody to uh, to get that moving in the right direction. I think we'll get there eventually. It's just uh, how quickly can we get there, you know? Do you see players or even yourself making decisions based on trying to stay on grass fields? Uh, I mean, I could I could see it happening. I haven't you know seen it personally, but I could definitely see that happening. I think. Uh, Maybe when a free agent or something doesn't want to go to a team because they play eight, game, eight games on turf at home, that might you know raise some red flags and put ownership on notice. But I, I don't know. I think uh, we're blessed here to practice on grass, play on grass. Jed does an awesome job of you know providing us with that. But uh, yeah, I think eventually it'll get there. It's just how quickly will we do it? Uh, Jimmy, Mike caused 70... by Cleese this weekend, and, and you're working with Taps. <laughs> Why did you choose them? And is this something you look forward to and be able to support Cause in a different way? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a new one for me this year. Uh, I've seen George do it in the past, and I just thought it was a cool opportunity. You know, Taps is people who have lost someone uh, through the military, and any uh, any bit of you know light we could shine in their situation and just bring a little bit of joy to them, I think, goes a long way. So that's what we were trying to do. There's a 70% chance of rain for Sunday, Jimmy. How do you think that affects the game, and how do you like playing in the rain? Uh, I think of, you know, it'll affect the game very little. I think uh, elements are what they are, wind, rain, snow, whatever it is. We've played in just about everything this year in practice. So I think we're ready for the game. Uh, practiced out there in it today. It didn't, didn't seem too crazy. But we'll, uh, we'll deal with whatever's dealt to us. Was, tell, was telling the Miami media Wednesday that he, uh, he's been watching the film of you because you, obviously the offense that you run and the system that he's running now. Have you ever had any kind of interaction with him at all? Never even met him? Uh, no, no, I haven't. Watched, I've watched a good amount of his film, too. He's, he plays very well in this offense, man. He's, he's smooth in it. Kyle said that J.P. Mason came in at the end of the game, didn't want to put all that pressure on him to have to try and get first downs at the end, but he handled it well. What was he like in the huddle? He was awesome. Uh, the one glove, one glove man. Uh, <laughs> JP, I didn't know he wore one glove until he was in the huddle with us and kind of caught me off guard a little bit. But <laughs> I didn't want to say it at the time, so uh, I saved it for after the game. But yeah, J.P. did a great job. He came in, was real calm. Uh, you know, for a rookie to come in in that situation and run the clock out like that, getting a couple crucial first downs. That was, that was some big stuff. Scenery on the glove. What is it? You got to ask him about that one. <laughs> but I noticed it on the field, and I was like, you know, I don't want to ask him right now. So, <laughs> What makes Juwan Jennings so special on third down? Um, and a lot of things. I think it starts with his competitiveness, uh, what he shows in practice every day. Uh, he wants the ball. I think as a quarterback, you could see that in the receiver. If he wants the ball or if he doesn't, 
if a guy's a clear out route and he's just running it to clear out, and there's a difference between that and a guy who's running it to get the ball. And uh, Juwan always wants the ball. And that's, uh, that's the type of guy I want to throw to. So I think he's done a great job on third down. A lot of our guys have you know, done a good job getting open versus man to man and finding the soft spots versus zone. But Juwan's really done great for this. We haven't seen a back as big as Jordan Mason. I think he's 224 in, in this offense. You have a closer look at it when he's kind of knocking the soul out of a defense to salt the game away. What, what, what does that feel like from your vantage point? And what kind of boost do you guys get in the huddle after he has one of those kind of stampeding runs? Big boost. Uh, it's starting to become pretty regular for him, too. Uh, he's just so strong. He's, he's explosive, has a low center of gravity, uh, and his cuts are just aggressive. It's, it's everything you want in a running back, man, honestly. He, uh, he makes it tough on defenses, and I think those are body blows that you know, wear on you in the fourth quarter. So it'll be interesting to see a full game with him. Jimmy, last one, guys. Fake 16 stutter Zito left has been highly effective. Do you have, when, you call, <laughs> when you call that, I mean, do you feel like this is probably going to be a big, big play? Uh, I mean, yes. Sometimes, I mean, I feel that way about just about every play, uh, or at least I try to try to get this confidence going in the huddle. But uh, yeah, that that play gets me pretty fired up. I've always been a big fan of it. It's, I mean, going back even a couple of years, it's always been good for us. But uh, yeah, where'd you where'd you hear that play call from, by the way? Sources. All right, gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> He's got work on it. He's got. <laughs> but sometimes you have games where you know bigger numbers needed. 2019 New Orleans, for example. I know you guys talked about that. Is is that uh, the type of game that you're kind of anticipating this week? And how much you talk about? Uh, I, it's really not talked about a whole ton. Uh, I think as an offense, you always want it to be that type of week. You know, you always want it to be high scoring. We want to make all the completions uh, and everything, but you know it just doesn't work out that way every time. But yeah, I think uh, we have to have our mind right this week for a game like that. Uh, Kyle was talking about how he's evolved as a play caller. Um, I think he was more of a riverboat gambler in his younger years, and now now that he has a defense like you guys have had through the years, like you just call call a game to win the game. If that makes sense, have you noticed that and? that he's been, I don't know, I think people would call it conservative, but just the way he's, maybe his style has changed a little. Yeah, yeah, I think, um, I think that kind of just comes with, you know, being a head coach for a while. Uh, the, I don't know, I don't know what you call it, maturity or whatever, but just you're growing as a head coach, as we all do as players. I think you just, uh, you're always trying to get better. And uh, yeah, when you have a defense plan like we got and we've had in the past year, I think that's probably the smart thing to do sometimes. But it's, uh, it's one of those things you just got to feel the situation, feel the, feel the game, and whatever it takes to win, I think that's the smart thing to do.